Look who's here. Look who's back in the house. Stephanie Hansen. Well, uh, the weather may be heating up, but it's never, ever, ever, ever a bad time for a grilled cheese sandwich. Here to join us in celebrating National Grilled Cheese Month, your friend and mine, the very quiet barn mouse known as Stephanie Hansen, everyone. <laughs> My English teacher in uh, junior high would have not agreed with the very quiet barn mouse statement. No, no, it's all right. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Uh, great show on Friday when you oh. uh, took over. Great work on the show on Friday. Another, you, your house was lovely. It was so fun. I was laughing because someone on Facebook, some lady who's a big fan of yours, she was like, I just miss Jason. I was like, give the man a day off. He's coming back, I'll be on, back Monday. on Monday. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. She was hilarious. Okay, so what do we uh it's National Grilled Cheese it is. Month. The whole month you're supposed to be eating grilled cheese, and why wouldn't you? Yeah. What's your like signature grilled cheese? I'm not fancy. I okay. like a good old like American or cheddar. Yeah. Now and and buttered bread, Texas toast. Bada boom, bada bing, I'm good. But he's not fancy, but you see how particular he was? I, I, I just. Everybody's got their grilled cheese feels. Yeah. And I do too. So I'm going to give you a little like technique to try and then a recipe. Okay. So breads, you can really use any, but I like for this particular recipe, we're making a French onion grilled cheese. So I like to use a sourdough for that situation. Yeah. And you will notice that I have buttered with mayonnaise, not butter. Okay, and inside my I have my never sandwich, heard that in my life. It's got a higher, like, fat, I think, or okay. lower fat, but it works better in the pan. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you another trick. So, I have Swiss or Gruyere. I caramelize some onions, and the trick to that is a little Worcestershire sauce over here. Okay. Whenever you're caramelizing onions, add Worcestershire. It makes them so much better. Then I put a little white, sharp cheddar on the top. That's what I've been snacking on in the commercial yes. break, yeah. And I've got everything lined up in the pan here. I've got it in a layer, but watch what I'm gonna do. You put the butter in around the skillet so that the grilled cheese actually fries. Oh, so it's a lower calorie uh, it option. It sure is. Yeah. And oh. then I kinda oh, yeah. so give you it get, a Oh, so that. You get the you get the crispy edges. You get the crispy edges. You get you make sure that the interior is melted, but also you get a really uniform grilled cheese. Like sometimes when you just use butter, you don't get the butter to all the edges. So it really works out great. That um, looks tremendous. It is yeah. really good. Yeah. And grilled cheese, like people have all kinds of feels. Use whatever feels good to you. Some people use Velveeta, some people use American cheese whatever but like try to mix it up a little bit like add some bacon bits add some jalapenos yeah is there hot a pepper jack cheese is there a cheese that we should stay away from that just doesn't melt yes. well yes blue cheese blue cheese yeah you could put it in there as crumbles if that's your jam but it's not a very good melter yeah um some people make grilled cheese with brie which is real fancy oh Okay, now I did just say a few minutes ago that I'm not fancy and I'm not, but I have had a, I've had a brie grilled cheese and it's mighty fine. It is. Cause it's, it's a very creamy cheese. Yes, and it melts really well. Now notice when I flipped. God, that, that smells I good. Picked up the pan yeah. and kind of flipped that way. Instead of like going from up here, it's harder to get the good flip. Yeah. So that's a little chef trick is just pick up your pan. You're closer. You can kind of assemble it again. Okay. So look how nice and brown and golden that is just well, by mean, putting the butter. Let's be honest. There's mayo <laughs> and butter in that I'm pan. I mean, you know, it's yeah. Grilled cheese, Mom. Just saying. I mean, you know. All right. So I'm going to give you, I made these very loudly, apparently, while we were in the last segment. Apparently, <laughs> they heard you over at Twin Cities Live. Are you kidding me? Elizabeth no, Reese wondered what that noise was. me and been like, how did yeah. you make the onions? Yeah. Okay, so caramelized onions. Can you talk while I yeah, eat? Yeah, yeah, for okay, sure. Yeah. Caramelized onions are real easy. You're just going to put butter, and you're going to get your onions in a pan and slow cook them for about 40 minutes. You want a really good brown texture. Don't stir them too much so you get some of the brown bits. Keep talking. Okay, I love it. Oh, that means you like it. And if you have extra caramelized onions, here's another tip. One of the world's best pastas is caramelized onions, pasta, butter, little Parmesan cheese, and then you hit it with balsamic vinegar and toss all that together. 
it is like the best dish for when you have no food in your pantry. I know, it's so good, isn't it? I, the smell is caramely and buttery. I want to marry that. Oh, I, yay! That is heaven. Grilled cheese? You don't need soup. Now we're gonna no. talk soup a little bit later. You don't need soup with this. Well, unless you're Kurt, because as you know, my husband does not think soup is a meal. Okay, well, it, Kurt's, I mean, okay, I love not, your- Yeah, he's not he's, normal. He's not, no. He, no, Kurt, I love Kurt, but he's this not is normal. a, soup is a meal. Um, so anyway, we'll get to soup in a minute, but this, Stephanie, that is tremendous. Thank you. That is, oh my gosh. Sometimes, you guys, the simplest things- Yes. Are like the tastiest. It doesn't have to be rocket science. No, this is, I wanna make this tonight. Yeah, it's super delicious. And make a lot of caramelized onions so that you have the extra for the pasta. I'm gonna have, you know, Colin cooked for like one of like five times he's cooked in 10 years. Yes, he made dinner last night. I'm gonna have him make this tonight. That's <laughs> right. Delicious. You better be watching. Colin, <laughs> up well, your game. That's Get right. some grilled cheese action. Soup is a meal. We'll talk about that when we return. Back in a moment. Oh my God. Oh my God. Well, I love French onion soup. She's not only a foodie queen, she's our self, she's a self-proclaimed soup queen. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, remember this from Friday's show? Here, and ricotta on its own doesn't have a ton of flavor, so we're gonna add a little Parmesan to it. A little salt and pepper, if you wanted it a little spicy, you could certainly add red pepper flakes to this. We're gonna spoon into each bowl. Wow. Also, lasagna has mozzarella, which is the pulley part of the cheese. The pulley part. The pulley part. Let's add our basil into the soup. Okay, Meredith, this is a big darn deal. I never thought to like pour soup over anything in the bottom oh, of the bowl. That's amazing. Well, the fun thing about it is, if you don't tell your diners that, that it's there, um, it will- Soup surprise! Be a surprise. Oh, look. Look at the oh, surprise. Wow. So good. That was from Friday's episode. That that recipe got a lot of play online. It's People funny. love that. Yeah, uh, Meredith's book's been out for some time, and that was the number one recipe out of that book. And it came as an accident. And what is it again if people missed it? 300 Sensational Soups. Um, her son, you know, she was writing this book, and so for a year, all they ate was soup, and her son was like, can we just have lasagna one time? Can we just have something that's not soup? And she was like, no, but I'll make lasagna into a soup. So the idea is you pour the hot soup over that little lump of ricotta with the mozzarella in the bottom. So when you're going in with your spoon, you get like a cheesy pull and that delicious sort of cheesy moment with every single bite of the lasagna soup. It's an awesome soup. Oh. It's I, awesome. I want to make that now. Yeah, it's super good. And it's one pot. Like, so you just put the noodles in, you make everything inside the one pot. You don't have to have a lot of other pots going. Is, uh, so you br brought it up with your husband or about your husband earlier. Is soup a meal? Okay. He would say no. He says soup is not a meal. So when I make soup, I have to like think of either a sandwich, a special bread, a little focaccia. Like I have to have some, a salad. I have to have some other like accoutrement that goes with the soup so that that feels like a meal. And that is a lot of pressure. Yes. So I was like, I am over here making the soup. So to his credit, he has perfected, he makes bread. He makes really good bread. And so in this, rest, in this episode that we did, I made a, a soda bread and I made cornbread because that's not technically like leavening bread, which is what he's good at. Yeah. So we've kind of figured out in the marriage, we've been married a long, long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> I think like 28 years. And you sound years. very, very yeah. happy. No, you just no. learn yes. like how to coexist. And so he's a good bread maker. Yes. I do the quick breads, the soups, the salads. That's why yesterday was so funny to me. Cause again, I'm not being funny. I, I cook 95% of the time. Yeah in the 10 years we've been together, it was such a joy to watch him cook yesterday. I did nothing. I just sat there and watched Dallas while he was, I, that's all I did while he cooked. It was joyous. You know, you guys, cooking's not for everyone, but if you can like cook something simple for your partner every once in a blue moon, 
It's like a love language. It's oh. like vacuuming the house. I bet that's real hot when you get home and someone's like cooking up your food. And if <laughs> I could have done, okay, I could have done with the, out the gyration, but I mean, you know, I, I, I up yeah, the food. no, let's be clear. None of that happened after. I was just happy. I was just happy. I didn't, well, I, I don't even want, care what he cooked. It okay. could have been raccoon stew. Uh, I didn't make it and it was delicious. You exactly. know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Like the secret to longevity in a marriage is to kind of do some unexpected stuff once in a while. Like cooking. Yes. Stephanie Hansen, everybody, will be sharing these segments on our YouTube and Facebook. <laughs> She'll also be uh, appearing at the Cadillac Ranch later today. Yeah, on the electronic bull. Riding a bull. Head to stephaniesdish.com for her schedule and more and get that book of hers too. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. Okay, where's that grilled cheese? <laughs>